uh, hi all thanks for joining myself ajay works for vmware uh, along with alexi and ashwin so our talk is on instant detection of virtual devices and for next couple of minutes uh, we'll be talking about the detection and initialization of virtual device devices within the vm We will start with the importance of kernel boot time specific to virtual machine and container followed by problem statement <laughs> that is initialization time of the virtual devices we will explore more here to see which component is taking time to initialize the virtual devices then we will move to the solution part here we will cover uh, progressive solutions uh, the one of them is mmio directory followed by skip write and then we will have one more solution uh, that is a pre configured pci config so all these solution will be a progressive solutions one top of another and uh, at the end we will finish this talk with some improvements reactions and benchmarking readings we have uh, vm based pure and isolated containers uh, those are highly optimized to run the linux kernel so one of them is from vmware that is crx called as container runtime and intel also has uh, that's named as a kata container so both of uh, have the same properties like they can bypass the bias and launch the linux kernel directly so this is to reduce the boot time of vm and these behaves like a container in respect to the boot time so it is very critical for crx and kata containers to boot fast as much as quick as container so both crx and kata container executes uh, linux application as if they were running in an isolated environment so we uh, we need linux which boots very quickly so here uh, penguin represents the linux kernel but here we have a penguin which is running so it is representing the linux kernel which boots very fast let's move to the problem statement so during kernel boot a lot of the time consumed to detect and initialize the virtual devices as pointed here by red line all readings uh, within this talk within our talk uh, those are based on the vmware hypervisor so crx uh, took less than 100 millisecond to boot and from this 100 millisecond uh, approximate 52 millisecond have been taken to detect and initialize the virtual devices and which is more than half of the crx boot time so we would like to reduce this virtual device detection and initialization time as much as possible as we can see uh, in this diagram so uh, crx is mainly booting within a 100 millisecond which includes most of the time from the kernel boot time and within this kernel boot time 52 millisecond have been taken to just detect and initialize the pci devices so our goal is to uh, reduce the initialization time of the virtual devices as much as possible let's see why a uh, read or write operation takes so much time so each pci config read write operation took approximately 10 microsecond this is because guest will call vm exit to perform the pci config read write operation context switch uh, context switch will happen from the guest to the host and host will uh, perform the read and write uh, within your pci config space these pages may be in form of pages or maybe in form of structure depending upon the hypervisors then calls vm resume to return the execution back to the guest so here we can see the red lines so from the uh, guest we have called pci config read write operation which eventually call vm exit and then <coughs> uh, we need to perform the context switch to uh, uh, to perform to basically switch the execution context from guest to the hypervisor 
now the hypervisor will perform the read write operation with the config space or structure or pages and whatever the value uh, we uh, in case of write we will modify the value and in case of read we will return the value and again the same way we will call the uh, vm resume and the execution flow will come back to guest so all this single operation will take around 10 microseconds so <clears throat> So in our case, in our CRX case, with average configuration we have, so we observed like during the boot, uh, we are calling more than 3,000. That is three to five zero PCA read, uh, PCA config read and write operation we will perform, and if we will calculate, uh, so it will add on approximately uh, 30 millisecond of time. So more than 30. So apart from this 52 millisecond, so <clears throat> uh, most of the time is consumed by PCA read and write operations. So now question is how to uh, improve this thing. So first let's go to the MMIO direct read uh, solution. Here uh, guest, if we can, uh, I mean, as per the previous slide, so guest was not having uh, direct access to PCI config pages or PCI config structures. So problem will be solved if somehow guest get the direct access to the PCA config pages. This can uh, this can be easily happen if we will map the PCA config pages or structures. I mean pages which holds the PCI config to the guest MMIO region. Now guest can directly read the PCI config as we can see uh, with the green dotted lines. Uh, no need to perform VM exit or VM resume. So no more context which will happen and we will save that 10 microseconds. This mapping needs to be done as read only because for the right case hypervisor <coughs> sorry hypervisor may need to perform some action apart from just modifying the PCI config. So we have seen in case of right even if you want to just change the status so hypervisor needs to take some action at that point. So uh, now next part is uh, while doing this exercise so we have mm config which is of 256 MB. Uh, but we may think of like we are mapping completely 256 MB, but no. Uh, here, uh, here. Ah, I like, can you can you please um, advance your slide? We're still on on slide six for you on the previous one. Uh, click on the on the tool. You need to click on. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, let me uh, repeat few things very quickly. So here uh, we are mapping the PCI config space. Uh, to the guest MMIO region. So as we can see in the uh, green dotted lines. So if we will have the mapping, so we, uh, I mean, no need to call uh, VM exit and contact switch and again VM resume. So this mapping is from the hypervisor space to the guest space. So guests can now uh, directly read the MMIO. I mean, uh, from the MMIO region, they can directly read. And next part I was. Uh, uh, I mean, I was going through the MMIO config. So MMIO config is of uh, 256 MB. Uh, but we no need to map or allocate 256 MB. So we need to only map the pages or page per device or bridges within the system. So we are not going to waste complete 256 MB according to our uh, requirement, like uh, according to the number of devices or bridges, we will allocate the pages for uh, to keep the PCI config of particular uh, device or bridge and that will be mapped. Next uh, side effect. So as we have seen uh, now, now. Guest will perform the read operation means uh, the control execution control will not reach to the hypervisor. So hypervisor, uh, I mean, if for any read operation hypervisor is performing any action, so that will be skipped. <coughs> Uh, so to uh, recover this thing or to improve the um, uh, to make sure there is a not side effect. So we have observed some side effects. So those things we have already uh, improved. Means whatever the action we were doing at the read time. So we have uh, performed the uh, those actions whenever it was required. Uh, 
Can you uh, elaborate on those side effects? I'm not quite sure what you're. Are you are you talking about side effects of the PCI config read or something yes. else? Uh, PCI config read. So as we are performing direct read, so. Yeah. So uh, uh, hypervisor uh, is not having. Uh, uh, having the execution control while performing the read operation. Whatever the actions currently we have within the hypervisor, so that action will be skipped. Just take an example uh, for some interrupt cases. Uh, you are reading some interrupt uh, values within this point PCA configuration space, and that interrupt value is not updated. Uh, so in some hypervisor, those will be calculated on the runtime uh, during the read operation. So those things we need to pre. Uh, updated within the PCA config space. To uh, benchmark the performance improvement with this MMIO direct read, uh, we written some test application which will call the raw PCI read function 100,000 times for PIO, MMIO, and MMIO direct read. So as we can see here, uh, for PIO to perform 100,000 reads, it took around 12.809 seconds, and same, uh, I mean, same number of operations. Performed within 8.517 seconds for MMIO case, and any guesses for MMIO direct read case? How much improvement we got? Okay, for uh, MMIO direct read case, so we performed 1,000, uh, I mean uh, 100,000 reads uh, within 0 0.01 second. So it's very quick now. To perform the read operations. Let's move to the uh, next uh, progressive solution that is the skip write. So now we have a direct read part. So what we are trying to do here is before performing any write operation, we will read the value. Which is very fast, and if same value is already written, we will perform skip write. Means we will not perform the write operation. We will skip the write operation. So by doing this, we got another uh, 12, 12 point. Uh, I mean, 12 percent of improvement. So in the earlier case, we got around more than 60 percent of the improvement with MMIO direct read. So with skip write, uh, we uh, on top of that we gain 12 percent improvement. So here same question. Uh, for the side effects. So in case of write, <coughs> um, hypervisor needs to do some operations. Uh, so we need to handle all these cases uh, very carefully, like we should not perform any skip write uh, if some action is required from the hypervisor side. So now the third part, that is the pre-initialized. So in uh, pre-initialized part, so now we have uh, read, uh, direct read part, we have skip write part. So on top of that, why not have some pre-initialized or pre-configured? So what we will do in this part, uh, we have uh, PCA config space. So as we can see, uh, red lines in here. We will pre-configure the uh, PCI config space uh, by some guessing or uh, whatever we can expect the value should be so that we will write here from the hypervisor side itself before starting the VM. So at the VM end, what will happen whenever it, it will try to write something here? So it will first perform the uh, direct read part and it will skip. Uh, if the value is same, I mean our guess value from the hypervisor side is same, so it will skip this. So as of now, we got around 2% uh, further improvement with pre-initialized approach. And we are expecting that this can be enhanced further to have more improvement from here.
let's see the uh, improvements with all these three approaches. So earlier we were having uh, read write calls as in the uh, here we can see. So it's more than 3000 around 3200s. And after the MMIO direct read, we reduce these calls to around 1000. And again, on top of uh, direct uh, uh, MMIO direct <coughs> read, uh, we have skip write. So again, we improved 12% and with pre init, we improved 2%. So now we have uh, near about 300 of uh, these calls are remaining. And in terms of boot time, uh, we got the improvement uh, like 60% with MMIO direct. So boot time is uh, reduced from 52 millisecond to less than 20 second and with skip write and pre init it again reduced further to around 21 to 22 millisecond so here also we can see the same thing like mmio direct it improved around 60 to 65 percent and on top of that skip write provides to improve up to 78 percent and pre init with pre init we improved up to 80 percent Yes, there you go. Uh, now I'm muted. Um, so I, can you can you go into um, some details? I'm, I'm I'm confused on two things. Um, the first yes, is uh, yes, the the skip write is something you do in the guest, correct? Because otherwise it just would make sense. Otherwise you don't save on the exit. So are you yes, patching uh, the skip write is, is yes. Skip write is from the guest side, right? Okay. Um, you, you mentioned that uh, you need to be careful that you don't uh, skip any writes that are uh, important. I don't. I, I don't have all of the PCI config space uh, specs in my head. Um, but are there any bits where um, you, for example, have a write clear uh, where skip writes wouldn't work systematically for everything? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, true. Uh, yes. We have some scenarios where uh, skip. Right, uh, we should not perform the skip right. Okay, so how do you generically implement that then? Is there a patch set already you I can look at? Uh, not well. Well, uh, I mean, uh, from I mean, guest from side, from guest uh, side. Uh, you can specify if this is the particular configuration, then don't perform the skip right. I I, I would expect that we're looking for some solution that is generically applicable that just works everywhere, right? Um, so we would yes, need to have some. Is, uh, uh, not, right. This is not completely. Uh, I mean, this is still here working. Looking for uh, reactions for these two parts. But MMIO direct uh, rate performs very well. Okay, um, let's turn to the second question then because maybe that clears up the first as well. Um, out of the, the remaining and maybe even including the skip rights um, parts, uh, what rights do you still see that actually are valuable? I would imagine that especially in a full VM context where you also pre-initialize a bunch of, of, of structures and, and sets like uh, bus mastering is enabled by default and the, uh, your bars are all allocated and so on. What rights do you actually still need on boot at all? Uh, as you said, that's correct. Uh, we need to pre uh, the bus device and function numbers. That works very well. That gives us uh, performance improvement. No, the question is, what is what is still left? You you still have three hundred exits. It sounds like three hundred useless exits. What what are these three hundred exits that you still see? Oh, okay. So from three hundred, uh, there are a few read exits still left we haven't done for the root device uh, there are some problems we are facing for the root device for root device we are not performing direct read and for uh, right part uh, uh, there are few things which we are not performing for the skip right uh, in uh, I mean, we can go in detail of uh, pci config I think, I think, I think that'd, be, that'd be very useful um, and, and handy in the conversation. Bjorn, Bjorn raises his hand. Um, one second, Bjorn. Um, the, the point I was getting to um, is uh, 
since we are talking about a PV feature here anyways, like if the guest is aware that it may may or may not want to uh, go and, and poke at things and we are providing a, a thing that looks like PCI Express but isn't actually fully PCI Express as in hardware anyways, um, maybe it makes sense to really start thinking of, um, of, of, of telling the guest to skip parts of these pieces of, of the initialization at all so that we can save even more on, on, on device initialization uh, logic. Like the, ideally, in a, in a PCI Express world with pre-initialized devices, you shouldn't have to have any exits at all just to enumerate what PCI Express topology you have. I cannot think of any reason at all, if you, if you take it to an extreme, why you should need to, um, to exit. And I think this is what I hope. I hope this is what Bjorn is getting to as well. Um, but please correct me if I'm wrong, Bjorn. Uh, I, I would I would like to move this conversation and this this session then um, towards how can we even get rid of those 300? What problems do you have on the root bridge, for example? What um, uh, other clears do you have that maybe shouldn't even get emitted at all because we, you don't need them? You don't need to clear a bit somewhere because it just isn't even set. Yes. 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 That Bjorn, there you go. Um, you can you can lead that conversation because I think there's a big echo if I do that, and so it's going to be easier for you. Okay. Oh yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I have uh, basic uh, questions. I'm not sophisticated enough to talk about the uh, guest side. I'm curious about. I understand your uh, chart about your PIO uh, and MMIO. I think you're talking about CF8, CFC versus ECAM, basically there, right? Yes. And then I'm confused about what you mean by MMIO direct read. Are there actual PCI Express transactions there in the direct read? Uh, as of now, um, I will go one by one very quickly. PIO, as you said, CF, uh, those are port based communications. Right. And in case of MMIO virtualization world, uh, it will internally perform VM uh, exit, or you can say page fold, and then land up with the hypervisor, and hypervisor will perform the action and return back. So now in case of MMIO direct read, uh, which is we are proposing, so in that case, we will be mapping the pages which holds the PCI configuration configurations of the devices to the MMIO region of the guest. So that means now guest can directly read it will perform the mmio from the guest side there is no change from the guest side but now guest will directly able to read the pci config of the devices or bridges right so you're avoiding all the vm exits and all that stuff yes, right yes exactly so it sounds like you, you said the pci express transaction still occurs in that case sorry can you repeat i can explain it ajay if, yes, Alexi, if you mind. So we are saying about virtual devices, not physical, right? So uh, virtual devices are implemented in, in our case, it is VMX process in case of like, or it could be like in, in QEMU, right? So where execution flow, when, you, when it does access to virtual de device uh, M config space, it needs to do VM exit and then, then switch context to QEMU to interpret this uh, operation there and then to simulate it and then go back. Basically, we do a virtualization overhead. We do not physically speak to PCI device. So it is all virtual devices. Oh, okay. And yeah, in, in case of MMIO direct read, we just map virtual device structure, which represents uh, MM config to the guest ECAM region. Right, okay. Yeah, sorry for that distraction. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Lexi. So, and also to, to, to ask for previous questions. So we really interested to, re to produce uh, and, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, Jörg, is this dein Zilling button? Or is there anything? Yeah, you're doing the button? Okay, I see. Sorry, that, that's, a, that's a mute button in the back of the room, so we need to coordinate when. Um, it, it, it sounds like my questions are basically unsolved still. Um, so I, I do need to lead that conversation, <laughs> sorry. Um, we, 
what you're doing is you're trying to accelerate the device enumeration, right? You're basically just saying um, instead of uh, bouncing back and forth using access into your um, your, your ECAM emulation layer, uh, you just uh, directly map pages into the guest, and then you can just directly read that for writes you still need to trap. Fair enough. But the end goal you have is not the technical tradition. The end goal you have is that you want to have device enumeration that is super low cost because you're optimizing for every millisecond there is. And you still have 17 milliseconds. It's an eternity. Right, 17 milliseconds um, to to finish your device enumeration. That really should be something in the in the order of one to two. So we are still burning too much time um, in in that initialization path. I think your your the path you're taking there is correctly is absolutely correct. But I want to push forward to see if we can avoid even more of any of these operations. And for that, we do need a conversation in this room. Um, including Bjorn and, and where, where his, his red line is of what he where, where he would be um, interested and, and, and appeal to uh, to still modify the core of, of uh, how Linux PCI works um, in just not doing any operations at all. Like basically, you want to move the PCI layer to be read only as much as you can on ECAM and not ever write if it can avoid it. Yes, this is ultimately a no goal. So as of now, what we have remaining is we still allow Linux guests to perform the mapping of the PCI resources. So ideally, it can be performed on, on the VMX side before even starting the guest. Right? Sorry, say again. So, so one of the questions was what we still write to the to the virtual PCI device. So one example is the mapping of the bars, like register and, and memory readers. So we, we still rely on the kernel to perform mapping. I, I, I don't, doesn't, doesn't parse like, oh, my, I don't know. Um, you, you rely on QMU too? Not, not QMU. We rely on the guest kernel. Kernel, kernel, okay. Yes. Yeah to perform yeah. the mapping of the virtual device resources, like IO regions or memory regions. Yeah, but they're pre-populated. Yeah, when, you, when, you when you boot, your firmware is going to allocate um, your uh, your bars. And, we don't have uh, firmware. Leave them, leave them alone. If you don't have so, firmware, then your hypervisor place, place that, that role of the firmware, so your, 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 your hypervisor pre-initializes the bar regions. Correct. This is our follow-up work, even to uh, map it from the hypervisor side before we even start the guest. Oh, I see. So you don't do that yet? Yes, correct. Yes. So and this, so, this is the, the answer for the question, what is still remaining? OK, I see, I see, I see. That's a big one, yes. OK, so you're basically saying if you did that as well, you could probably get away um, without doing almost any work today already without modifying Linux at all. Because the, the reason I'm asking is I've, I've, been, I've been pondering on this idea for a few years already. Um, I just never got around to implement it. So I don't have any benchmarks or, or numbers to figure out what, what else is missing and whether there is anything missing. And what I hear from you is that very likely if you already have bars mapped like you would do in the normal firmware world and you, uh, you, you do a skip, maybe the skip write or not, um, but the skip write sounds like a pretty nasty hack. Uh, you can get away with basically no writes. That means we need to find an upstream skip writes. Theoretically, or, uh, yes. yes. Okay. In, in practice, in, in, in your internal in discussion, we need the remaining writes on several groups. So, uh, some, and some of them were impossible to eliminate without some emitter. Mm -hmm. And internally, we suggested to use device tree as the inf extra information provided by the hypervisor to the guest. Okay, I, I'm having a hard time hearing, hearing what you're saying. Um, but, oh. I, I, but yeah, I can try to speak slowly. So mm -hmm. I, I see some echo. I mean, in, in, in the audio. I, yeah, this this the audio setup is not great. Uh, we, so the, the mic so, is so, because that you're speaking through, and so you're hearing yourself. There are um, some, right, some 
cannot be, be cannot be initialized uh, by the hypervisor before guest start without extra uh, metadata provided to the guest. So basically, uh, directory is not enough to get everything that we need. So and internally we suggest to use uh, device D as the metadata that hypervisor can provide your virtual device. Okay, what 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 bits are we talking about, and do we actually have to control them? Oh, Jay, can you so in mind what extra rights do we still have left? We can discuss yes. it here. Uh, can we? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, can we discuss offline? Can you send some? I mean, yeah, uh, let's send them out over the email. Yeah, I think it's it's a good idea to uh, wrap this discussion up and continue it um, in a hack room or in the chat or via email. Um, sure. Thanks everyone for the interesting discussion. We now have an eleven minute break.